The other thing you said that I found really uh, interesting was spent time with your South African friends and they're all like very sunny guys. And I said, what's the, why are these guys preternaturally sunnier? South African men are sunnier than African American men in general. Obviously, there's yeah, a, yeah. And you had an interesting answer for me. Well, I think generally, again, this again, is we're this generalizing. A generalization. Yes. Yeah, it was a generalization. We would never. It's not what we do. Go ahead. I think nobody should ever take for granted, ever, ever, ever take for granted what it is like to live in a place where the assumption is that you belong. Nobody should take that for granted. The, the ease, the bliss, and the peace that comes with walking into a room, walking down a street, you know, gathering in a place or a space where the assumption is that you belong, carries with it such a such a such a such an ease, such a you know, it, it, it's almost like a, like a lifting of gravity in a way that I think people take for granted. And, and when I, you're talking about the South African men. Yeah, yeah, this yeah point. completely. And, and this so, is South African even, men and women. Like it's just yes, like, yeah. even under apartheid. Yeah, because you still, remember this, you still saw you more than you didn't see you. You were still showed you more than you weren't shown not you. You, you, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's such a weird thing. And I... I didn't understand it, and I don't think anyone can fully understand it unless they come to America and they're really open or they are not white. Then you can like then you can see it and you can feel it. You know, living in a world that first of all, it's not like it's not like you have a happy story as to why you got there, first of all. You know, and people take that for granted. Let's just start with the base, right? Is many people have a happy story about how their people came to America. Even that on the surface, it's just like a fun yeah. thing. Ah, oh, my dad wanted to start a business. My great grandfather believed that he could find a better world. My great 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 grandfather and grandma yeah. came here because here's they, a picture of them. Exactly. Yeah, they came here. Not they weren't brought here. They yeah. came here. That already starts off starts the story off in a very different way, mm -hmm. right? It 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 robs you of a certain thrust and impetus because if your family came here for a certain reason there's almost an underlying idea that you must carry that on and you can carry that on because that was the intention and the purpose behind their arrival. And so you're imbued with it in some ways. If you don't have that, if your people were brought here for forcefully, then there's a lot of like, why am I here? Now it would be one thing to be brought somewhere forcefully and then like welcomed and allowed to access every aspect of that place. But now you're brought there forcefully and then told that you shouldn't be there. And then I, yeah. I can see people being like, well, you do realize we didn't try and come here. Yeah. We, what's it shouldn't happening be the right place now? place you brought me to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that was the. Do you remember the whole scuffle we had on mm -hmm. the other continent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's sort of where this began. Yeah. When I said I don't want to come, I do you kept remember saying that? I don't want to go. Yeah. yeah. And, and you were like, and now you like go it. back to. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where I came from? I came from Africa. Yeah. And so you you take you take that for granted, and then you take for granted how many times America has bait and switched black Americans. You know, it's bait and switch, bait and switch the whole time. All right, here's 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 your here's your freedom from slavery. Is it though? You want to share crop for a bit? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Here's your freedom from that. Now you can own houses, or can you? Jim Crow. All right, all right, all right. You're free. You can you can participate in any way. Or can you though? Every time, how would it how would it not make you a little bit harder, a little bit more suspicious, a little more paranoid, a little less jovial? And another thing little, that you pointed out bouncy. If I, that I can just remind you of what you said is like, and it leads you to believe that you're defective in some way. Oh, a little definitely. Bit. Whereas in South Africa, the, as you explained it to me, they, the white people were just like, no, no, no. We just think we're better than you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. I think that's one of, I always say this and we're it's a strange here, yeah. sentence. It's a strange sentence to say, but I will always say it. The one upside of apartheid was that it was in the open. They just told you straight up, hey, we are the whites 
and the white people are superior to you. That is why we are doing this. And then you would go, okay, that is why they are doing it because they think they are superior. It's there. America obscures it from you. So in America, you go, why did I not, not get that job interview? And they're like, and America's like, I don't know, Damar, I have no clue. You're like, huh, I sent a resume, I had the exact same credentials as my friend Chad. I don't know what happened there. Must be something wrong with you, Damar. Man, that's like the ultimate form of gaslighting. If you're gonna oppress people, at least tell them you're oppressing them. I think one of the worst things that happened in America was for so long, and in many ways still today, Black people are made to feel like it's not, ha is it happy? It's finished now. It's long gone. It's finished. It's long gone. And then every now and again, pop, and you're like, ah, but that's just an isolated. Yeah. No, that's just, that's an anomalous. That's a, I, I don't get how that wouldn't make you, you know, a little bit harder. Like even, even having to code switch. I think of how, how wonderful it is being a black person in Africa. You are continuously surrounded by you and you see you, and you go everywhere, and you are you, and you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, the, I flew Ethiopian Airline, and on the video, <laughs> I'm watching the safety video, and I'm like, what is different about this? And all the animated characters were yes, black. Yes. And I was like, I've never yeah. seen this. Yeah. Just like people sitting down and putting on the, and I was like, it was such, it was like, it was like a Twilight Zone. It's episode. weird, right? Yeah. Your brain doesn't realize how the, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's so it's like in to, to make it, uh, to round the episode off in some ways, South Africa has been given the diagnosis. Yes. And just going like, no, we think we're better than you. Yeah. So if you lose out, it's cause we rigged it. Yeah. It's not because there's something secretly wrong with you. Whereas here, they rig it and don't tell black people. And they go, exactly. ah, you gotta, you go ahead and eat yourself up. Exactly. Shoot yourself up inside. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.